Hello, Bella Vista. This is J.B. Portello. Welcome to In the Know. This program is produced after each monthly board meeting to give you a summary of the topics and the events going on at the Property Owners Association. In addition, these episodes are posted on the Facebook pages of the POA as well as the Bella Vista Community TV station. So sit back and enjoy being in the know. Good morning, everybody. J.B. Portello here and my friend, Tom Judson, the COO of the POA. All those letters. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So how are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Good. It's, it's fall, that beautiful time of year. Oh, I can't wait for the leaves to begin to turn. You know, um, we had kind of a short but productive board meeting this last time. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, it was pretty short. But that's okay. You know, we've, we've had long ones and we deserve a short one. We do. We do. Uh, I really was, uh, I don't know his first name, but Mr. Muldoon, who won the John. celebrating success, was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that. So uh, uh, John works at uh, Tanya Creek our Practice Center. And we had a medical emergency with one of our members out there. And he jumped in and was instrumental in helping the situation. Uh, but also uh, the individual, their car was there and they, there was no family uh, locally to take care of it. So he took care of that. He worked with other employees. He was, John was very gracious about, yes. about recognizing everybody else that was involved. But he really stepped up and he did a fantastic job. Well, just another... Um Wonderful thing about your employees. And that's why we want to celebrate those kind of things, because that's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Truly is. Truly is. Uh, I think uh, some of the other things that, that one quick thing, I think you uh, we were able to vote on the charitable giving. Correct. So if, if our community is not aware of this and, and back in 2018, uh, the board created the charitable giving committee. Uh, which is made up of property owners. They make the recommendation to the board and the board has never deviated from those recommendations. Uh, we give uh, $25,000 each year and it is to Bella Vista specific charities. Uh, you know, there's a lot of charities outside of Bella Vista that are very worthwhile, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we want to take care of just Bella Vista. Um, and we've been doing that every year, except for 2019, uh, because of the fire and the financial constraints, we weren't able to give any money that year. Yeah. Um, so it's a great way to give back. Exactly. All right. So I know that you've been working really hard, with a lot of help, I'm sure, uh, on a survey to the members that's going to go out very soon. So, so the board is going to be the board is working on a five year strategic plan, and they want community input. Mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of different directions that the community could take. And, and uh, um, so we want that input. So we're going to do it in a twofold way. The first is through a survey. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we have your email address on file uh, on October 1st or soon thereafter, you're going to receive an email. So look for it. And if you if it gets caught up in your spam filter, make sure you check your spam folder. Um, and answer it's very it's uh shoot 11 questions and it should take you no more than four or five minutes mm -hmm. um, if we don't have your email address on file we're going to send you um, a paper survey with an envelope you can put that in the mail u.s mail or you can put it in one of the um, poa payment boxes that are all over the community so we want your input uh, so that's the um quantitative approach, meaning heavy numbers, a lot of people being involved. We're hoping, eh, you know, if we can get 5,000 people, 4,000, hard to say, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, we're also going to have a, uh, a, a number of focus group meetings. We're going to have four focus group meetings, and those will last about an hour and a half. And that's the qualitative where we're going to be asking a lot of questions and really kind of digging in deeper. Um, so the first one will be on October 6th at 6 p.m., then October 12th at 4 p.m., October 19th at 10 a.m., and November 1st at 5 p.m. So we've picked different days of the week, different times of the day, trying to accommodate everybody's schedule. You only have to go to one. Mm -hmm. But in these, in the survey, in the focus groups, 
we're going to get into really specific issues like Reardon Hall. That building is is showing its age. It needs to be renovated. I've heard the word sad. Sad, tired. Mm -hmm. um, what do we need to do to that to that building? What is it going to look like if we renovate it? What's what's uh, what services are we going to take care of in the interior? Um, and we're also going to talk about assessments. You know, I don't want to wait 20 years and have a large assessment after 20 years. Let's have smaller ones. Mm -hmm. um, and so the survey talks about that. Now, we can't have an assessment increase until 2023 because uh, there's a three year moratorium between increases. But let's have a smaller one as opposed to waiting 20 years. Right. So, but in 2023. Yeah. Okay. So that th those are what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be upfront and transparent and talk about it. Um, that letter you're sending out to folks mm -hmm. and even on the online, uh, are you mentioning when the focus groups are in that yep. correspondence? Yep. Okay. And the letter that's going out, is there an option or a link to where maybe somebody really does have an email address and you just don't have it? that they could go on there and do that instead of mailing it in. Yeah, so we're going to ask them to call our corporate secretary. Gotcha. And they can do it. Okay. Um, you, you remember that this is not the same as um, an election. I know. You know, it, I it's, know. It's, it, it, election has much higher security uh, and so forth. Um, you but know, you want people at these groups. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we're, try we're trying to get them out there, and um, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I heard a great term um, at last night, actually, and it just, I thought, you know, I'm going to mention that to Tom because I think it's a beautiful way of saying what you're trying to do. Uh, community listening. That's what you're doing. Absolutely. You are, you're asking the community and you want to listen to what mm -hmm. they want. So that's a I, I, I love that term. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's what we're trying to do. We, you know, the, the future, it's a blank slate. I mean, we know that we need to do something about Reardon Hall. Yes. Um, but other things, you know, what, what does the future hold? Right, right. Good things. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm excited about that survey. Um, let's see. Financials, huh? So we continue to have an outstanding year. Uh, just very, very impressive. Uh, the one thing that I want to kind of focus in on is our auctions. So we have two different types of auctions going on. One is we've created our own auction website uh, and we're taking 10 lots every single month and we're auctioning them off. So we had our first one, had a couple, some hiccups, uh, but we had our first auction that we conducted and we sold 10 lots, it brought in $66,000. And that's the initial upfront. And then these people are going to start paying their assessments. These lots were not paying their assessments for years. Now they're going to start paying their assessments. So, and if someone paid, uh, you know, a, well, average of 6,600 per lot, they're not going to buy a lot for that much money and not pay the assessments. True. So it's the gift that keeps on giving, which is great. Um, on top of that, uh, the county is foreclosing on 35 lots this Friday, October 1st. Uh, and we're hoping that those lots will be, well, all of them will be sold off and people will buy them and they'll start paying their assessments. Now that's the auction. Those are the ones that are on the, their, excuse me, uh, on the courthouse steps. Yeah. It's actually inside the courthouse. Yes. But, yeah, it's, but the, it's different from the online. It's very different. Uh, and then we have another, our second online auction Ooh. on October 4th. Okay another 10 lots. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're actually making some improvements. Like if you place a bid within the last five minutes, um, it actually extends the auction by, for just that one lot for five more minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're anticipating we're going to get some back and forth, back and forth that that'll make it interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think the focus is here is over a month or six week period, 55 lots, will potentially go from not paying any assessments at all to now paying assessments. Uh, and, and that's fantastic. And that's what we want. That's right. Um, and we've been doing these types of things for years and that's how we're 
gradually lowering that number of, of lots that are not uh, holding up their end of the bargain. Yeah, that, that's, that's marvelous. Uh, you have something new at Lake Point, don't you? We sure do. Yeah. Have you tried it out yet? I haven't been yet, oh. but uh, we now have lunches on Fridays. Uh, something new that we're trying. Uh -huh. um, we used to have the brunches on Sundays, but unfortunately those were just, the demand was low. Um, now we're trying lunch on Fridays and uh, so far it's looking really good. So, so like 11 to two, I believe. Uh, I, I'm gonna trust you on that one. And um, somewhere, it's a short window, but it's in the tasting room. Yes, it is. Yeah. So uh, really encourage everybody to come out. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. Good. I mean, our dinners are already so popular. Yes. Um, we want to see if we can add to that popularity. Yes, it's it's one of my favorite hangouts, but you know that already. <laughs> <laughs> our number one customer. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but pretty close. I certainly uh, tell everybody about it. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things I'd like to just mention again, because a lot of people don't understand uh, about Lake Point. Lake Point, yes, it's a restaurant. Truly is. It's mm. wonderful. But it's an event center as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's not open all the same hours as regular restaurant would be necessarily, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to have time for events and such. Well, our, our restaurant, I mean, it's, it's open pretty consistently, but every once in a while we have a large wedding that comes along. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to let our property owner and the uh, owners know as far in advance as possible. So they can adjust their schedule and come to BV Bar and Grill. Well, there you go. go. LP. But they're not open on Mondays and Tuesdays. Correct. Yeah, that's what I meant by that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So, okay. Well, uh, man, like I said, it was a short meeting and good news. Yeah. Anything else you can think of that we need to tell Bella Vista about before you uh, go and do what you do? Well, just make sure you fill out your survey. Yeah. Or, and attend the focus group. Yes. So hang tight, Bella Vista. We have a special guest today. We'll be right back. So welcome back, Bella Vista. I'm really excited because we have a brand new person to introduce you to, uh, Joshua Minnick. Yes. Hi. Hi, how are you? I have been so excited to meet you. You as well. Yes. Well, you know, uh, let's tell people what you do. First of all, who is Joshua and where did you come from? Well, I am currently the uh, executive chef of the Bella Vista POA, uh -huh. um, originally from South Florida, mm. um, uh, then moved to Kansas City, um, started pretty much my professional career in Kansas City. I was chef de cuisine at the Kansas City Country Club, um, was there for about five and a half years, um, and then moved to Napa Valley, um, where I was executive sous chef at uh, Farm. Um, Worked under Andrew Bungie for a little bit, about four and a half years, went to Italy. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was in Napa. Yeah. And uh, and then after that, uh, decided to take a little sabbatical to um, to Europe and worked in uh, Umbria, um, Spolito, Italy, um, and then came back to Napa for about a year and um, decided to um, be a little bit closer to family and moved back to Kansas City. Um, was executive chef for 801 Restaurant Group for some time. Mm -hmm. And um, we decided to come out to Bella Vista. Um, that would be a good opportunity for the family. And now we are here in Bella Vista. So, so it was just very, very exciting. Was, so it was just a visit here and you fell yeah, in love so, with it? Uh, yeah. So it was actually a 4th of July we came out and we, uh, we were visiting Lake Point And we absolutely, me and my wife, just fell in love with this community. And, oh. and yeah. So now we're here. Yeah. And Dreams you worked, you worked <laughs> here in, uh, at BV Bar and Grill for yes. quite a while. Yes. So I was at BV and Bar and Grill. I was the kitchen manager there. Uh -huh. Um, kind of got my foot in the door, um, and then, uh, took the promotion as an executive chef here at the Bellevue CUA. And you know what I heard about mm -hmm. you? What's that? That when it was announced mm -hmm. that the whole kitchen staff clapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that embarrass you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not the best at taking compliments. <laughs> well, I know, but I mean, that had to do you, do you, uh, your heart good. It did. It did. Absolutely. Yeah. It, yeah. Absolutely. To be seen by your peers like that is, is truly, is truly humbling. So yeah, yeah it means a lot to me. So help me out with some definitions of things here. So let's, yeah. let's start. 
Okay, what does an executive chef do? So the executive chef oversees the entire operation. Um, there are, depending on the brigade, um, there are chefs that can be underneath the executive chef. You can have a sous chef, which means underneath um, in French. You can have a chef de partie, which is um, a chef of a station. Um, so there are different t tiers of chef, but the executive chef is the, he, he's the leader. He's the mentor. Uh, he's the teacher. He's a businessman. Uh, very, very important. Uh, order the food and, and order the food. all yep, of that. Order the food. He's yeah. the idea guy. Gotcha. He's so the, you do yes. the menus as well? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. He's the idea guy and then mentors, uh, ment mentors the staff to execute. Okay. So you and, try out things and mm -hmm. then you teach your staff to uh, do that to so execute. you can walk around and do other things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. More, yeah. And there's a lot of administration work to, to, to be an executive chef um, to make it to be good and to be successful. So you're over BV Bar and Grill yep. and Lake Point. Yes. And Highlands. Highlands. Uh -huh. when, yep. When we get that, that going and, um, and whatever's and, and the works in the future. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very exciting. So what's your Big operation? What's your favorite part of being executive chef? Cooking is the fun part. Is yeah. it really? Yeah, cooking's the fun part, believe it or not. I enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you dream you kinda, you kinda get away from the administration part for a little bit and you're able to yeah. to get in there with I, and I like cooking sometimes with my guys on the line and uh -huh. and um, and being a part of it all. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Not just in my own world, but being a part of of, of, of my staff. Right? Sounds like teamwork to me. It is hundred percent. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I absolutely love that. So what um, goals do you have for, I mean, let's just start yeah. with here at, mm -hmm. at BB Bar and Grill. It, it's pretty successful. It is very, very, very successful. Um, so uh, goals is it, it, just expanding on that success. Mm -hmm. um, it is great. Everything is great about it. We just need, you know, expand on it and, and, and make it, you know, a little bit better. There's nothing, you know, nothing wrong with that. Anything can be better. It's great already, but uh, we're just going to continue to grow on it and, and, and make it more successful. So, and add a few more menu items. Yes. A little. We're, yep. We're going to, yeah, do some more menu items. I'm very big on seasonal. Ooh, I love that's seasonal a, product. Yes, we got yes. fall coming up, so we got squashes, we got... Uh, root vegetables, um, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get more in contact with local purveyors if we can. Um, oh, that would be great. Utilizing, you know, more uh, farm local. to table kind of stuff. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. Actually. And do you do your own baking here too? We do. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. I can expect a pumpkin pie out of you somewhere. A hundred percent. Good. Yeah. Good. That's that's when my diet goes away. <laughs> I think everyone does around the holidays. Can eat the whole pumpkin pie by myself. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what I heard the other day? Yep. Here's here's another. This might embarrass you too, but it that's shouldn't. Okay. Uh, I uh, never, because I kind of try to watch what I eat or try to be mm -hmm. a little more healthy. But I was in here the other night and I'd had a hard day and uh, I decided I'm going to do that meatloaf. Somebody told me that that was your mom's it recipe. Is. Yes, it is. I tweaked it a little bit. That's what I heard. Yes. And everybody was raving over it. They said it was really, really good. Growing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let her know. <laughs> <laughs> um, growing up, I would always have my friends. I could, the only meatloaf I could eat was my mother's. Yeah. And I just kind of took it with me. So. Yeah. So what do you see for Lake Point? Lake Point. Same, same. Again. Seasonal. Um, seasonal. Yeah. I'm big on seasonal. Um, just expanding, expanding that operation, both a la carte and um, banquet wise, mm -hmm. you know, just expanding that menu as well. So you plan on maybe doing any classes later? Maybe. Yes, absolutely. Um, cooking classes are coming in the future. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, I'll be on the front row. Yes. <laughs> I will. Forward to it. I love that. When Chef Jerry did it, it was yeah. fabulous. Yeah. I'm and looking forward to that. I love interacting with with members. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. 
Very good. Well, I tell you what, I, like I said, I've been really looking forward to meeting you. So now I have. Yes. So best of luck. Congratulations. Thank and you. we are delighted that you're here. Me too. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you bet. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bella Vista. You have now met our executive chef. We'll see you next month.